One of the library's many programs in October celebrating the state's bicentennial will feature a discussion of the history of Indiana high school basketball. Author Nate Dunleavy, who is with us now, uh, will discuss his book, Invincible Indiana, a fictional account of Hoosier hysteria and the move from a single class high school state basketball tournament. This program will be held on Monday, October 24th at 6 p.m. at Central Library. And again, we welcome author Nate Dunleavy. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. First of all, give us a quick overview of the book, Invincible sure. Indiana, which is set in the mid-90s, correct? It is. It's set in the mid-90s in uh, kind of north-central Indiana in a fictional town called Invincible, Indiana. And, and it tracks the, the story of a, a town that has had their high school basketball team finish exactly 500 for 49 consecutive years. Wow. Yeah, and so a new coach comes to town kind of unaware of all of their history and uh, their sort of aspirations to have a 50th consecutive uh, 500 season. Uh, and he uh, upsets the apple cart, so to speak. And the movie, uh, the book uh, refers a lot to the movie Hoosiers and then uh, kind of unpacks and deconstructs some of the ideas from that movie, some of the ideas surrounding why Indiana abandoned single class basketball mm -hmm. uh, in an effort to better understand you know, what it means to actually be a Hoosier. Right. Did you write the book as somehow a commentary on the demise of single class basketball? Uh, very much so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a traumatic event for me. You know, I, uh, I graduated from Pike High School in 1995, uh, so not long after that, a couple years, Indiana uh, switched from single class to multi class basketball. Mm -hmm. A very unpopular move throughout the state. I think 70 plus percent of Hoosiers who opposed the move at the time. Uh, and, and many people were very angry, including, including myself. And so I really wanted to get at culturally what was going on, what caused that change, and then what effects did it have on uh, small towns and big cities throughout the state. Yeah. Well, what effect has it had, and, and has the issue gone away at all? <laughs> well, I think it's a, a little bit of settled law at this point. As much as uh, some of us wish that maybe things would revert, uh, the, the Pandora's box has been opened, and I don't think there's probably any going back. Uh, among the things that it's really changed is you see uh, a, a dissolution of the popularity of basketball across Indiana, especially for the high school tournament. In the mid-90s, uh, routinely, uh, the the three game session that would take place on Saturday uh, for the tournament would draw upwards of forty thousand on the low end, uh, usually fifty, sixty thousand. We remember Damon Bailey or the great Allen Henderson, Glenn Robinson matchups mm -hmm. that took place down at the uh, RCA Hoosier Dome, uh, and those were very iconic. But they were indicative of how popular the tournament was. Uh, now uh, a force game session uh, at uh, Bankers Life Fieldhouse struggles to draw 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see just in general, just even for the, that final game, uh, the popularity has waned tremendously. Again, the program with author Nate Dunleavy will be on Monday, October 24th at 6 p.m. here at Central Library. Nate, tell us about uh, your presentation that evening sure. and what you hope people will gain from the program. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that I really like to kind of unpack and talk a lot about is what is our identity? as Hoosiers. You know, when that movie came out in 1986, the movie Hoosiers, it really kind of crystallized and, and caused us to recognize a certain kind of mythology around basketball about what it meant to be a Hoosier. But it was a very specific kind of identity as well. Uh, small town, all white, uh, jump shooting kind of classic. This is what Indiana basketball is and means. And that kind of dates back to the 1950s with the famous Milan team. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like to kind of talk about Milan. I like to talk about the Crispus Attucks team as well and kind of look at, you know, what did Hoosiers get right and what did it cause us to overlook right. about our identity as Hoosiers? Talking about a, an iconic jump shooting player from Indiana, yes. you brought a uh, sure. memorabilia t-shirt uh, yeah. signed by Steve Offer. Most <laughs> people know who he was. Yeah, absolutely. It seems strange to me that you'd almost even need to explain this anymore, but uh, this was a very special moment for me. You know, the 87 uh, championship team, I was, I was 10, 11 years old when they were playing, and, and Steve Alford was to me what basketball was, and I think that that's uh, true for a lot of Hoosiers. You know, this is a guy that was coach's son, you know, good looking, perfect hair all the time, uh, and just an amazingly pure uh, shooter. And 
uh, that uh, that whole idea of this is what basketball is. Steve Alford was that. That's so right. for me, this kind of symbolizes growing up, what I thought about basketball. He was Jimmy Chitwood in real life. <laughs> That's and, true. Uh, so I, it always has meant something to me to have this. What any future books you have uh, on the horizon? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm working on uh, revising a book on the history of the Indianapolis Colts okay. uh, that came out uh, a few years ago called Blue Blood, Tales of Glory of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I issued that originally in 2010, uh, so obviously a few years have passed, uh, some, some significant water under the bridge, uh, so I'm working on a revision to that to kind of uh, close the book on the Peyton Manning era, so that'll be coming out uh, here in a few months. Well, you write from a perspective of a true Hoosier, so <laughs> your books you. have a lot of legitimacy, and we look forward to the program on Monday, October 24th at 6 p.m., author Nate Dunleavy presenting his a discussion of his book, Invincible Indiana, as part of the library's series of bicentennial celebration programs.